Good morning everybody. After a long trip to Essex, uh, on the way back, started to get a misfire. So we're going to take the injectors out and see whether we can give them a clean. I've had the, the engine red and it does seem like it's an injector problem. Uh, unfortunately I can't film and <laughs> take the injectors out at the same time because I haven't got any means to do it at the moment. So I'm just going to have to film it after each process. I'm going to try and talk you through it though. These are going to come off. Both of them. Here's the injector. I'm going to take these off. There's some more underneath there. All this cover's got to come off there. Don't know whether you can see. In there. These have got to come off. Plastic connectors have got to come off. So I'll try and talk you through it the best way I can. The next thing to do, take these clips off, take this plastic clip, clip off. I'm going to put some rag down here because we are going to get some diesel come out of these pipes. We don't have too much diesel knocking about, do we? Then we're going to take these off, if you can see them properly. Sorry about the video guys, I've got no way of holding the camera underneath here. I'm going to take all them off down there, that one at the end there as well. So now we've took these off. Got some rag down here for the diesel spillage. Next job, take these clips off. Try and take this. You can't see it on the camera very well. Let's come around here a little bit. There's a nut down there somewhere, I promise you this. There it is, look, just see it there, corner of it. I'm gonna fetch that off and then we're gonna fetch the injector out. Taking this collar off now. Uh, it was a little bit fiddly. I'm trying to do one injector at a time. Now I know there's special tools for getting these injectors out but all I've done is use these pipe grips and just turn it like that and gently pulled up at the same time. Now that, that's pretty loose that is there now so I'm going to pull it out. There you have the injector. I have no idea if it's supposed to look like that or not. As you can see, that is the inside of the injector. I don't know how clear it is, I don't know whether it will focus in, but to be honest, it doesn't look too bad in there. I was expecting a lot worse, considering this car's over 166,000 miles. And now we have the injector fully out, we're going to take this copper washer off and then split these two pieces. These bolts here guys, they, these are the, uh, the bolts that hold the clamp down, which is that there. Uh, you do need a special tool to get these off, a special spanner, but if you're really really careful you can use a 7mm, but please extreme caution when you do that you don't want to round the heads of these off and now we're on to the last fuel pipe Make sure we get that tissue down there you don't want too much diesel floating about in here these are 18 mil nuts now what I've had to do I haven't got an 18 mil spanner So what I've had to do is I've had to file down a 17mm to make it into an 18mm. Now it's not one of the old ones, so I'm not too bothered about ruining it. Now these do leak out diesel. And it's important to keep them in order. So we've got number one here, number two, number three and number four. So when you guys come to put these back on, you're not struggling, twisting and turning. When we come to put these back on, you're not struggling to find out which one is what. Because there's so many different combinations you can turn, you can twist, and it's going to be a bit of a minefield for you. So now all those rails are out. These can be really, really fiddly. You may have to lift the injector up to try and get them out. 
Plus my hands are covered in diesel as well. I'd say they are a little bit fiddly. I think again with these I would like to keep them in order. And now they're going to be pretty much the same. Well they are going to be the same. I just think it might be a little bit easier just to keep everything as we started. That last one's going to be really difficult to do. Of course it is. Nothing's ever easy on cars, is it? I'm going to get it here, don't you worry. Just hang on a few more minutes. <laughs> you know what? I've given up on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Leave the injector out a little bit, give me a bit more space. Right. If you can see in there, it's a bit difficult to see on the camera, it's not focusing very well, but that looks okay. There's a little bit of carbon build up, but not a lot. So that's injector two. That one there is injector three. Not focusing all that well, but not bunged up as much as I thought they would be. And that one there, injector number four. Now it's important before you take the injectors out to mark them up. Luckily, these were already marked up, so maybe they'd been out before, and these are pretty recent ones. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna split the injectors, we're gonna give them a good clean up. So we borrowed somebody's workshop on the yard, thank you very much. So as you can see, that's injector four, that's injector three, that's injector two, obviously injector one. So now we've got the injectors out. I'll unscrew this in. You forgot doing it one hand. And then this will just go out there. Inside there, there's a little pin. I'm not taking it out. I've took it out once. In fact, I will take it out. I will. I will show you. So, it's just really difficult to do it one handed. So, I'm going to fetch that out. I might just drop it out. Another bit in there as well. I look quite clean. I'm going to squirt some WD-40 up there or some carb cleaner or something like that. All I'm doing really is because I have got limited tools. I've got one of these fine brushes that you find on the end of a Dremel. So all I'm doing, you can't see very well. I'm probably never going to be seeing the holes on the camera either. I'm just going to give it a good scrubbing over like that. Right then, the next job is now. Put these four injectors back in. Get everything plugged in, clamped up, tightened up. Fingers crossed. You see those shiny brass washers there? One, two, three, four. Guess where they're supposed to be? They're supposed to be on the end of these. On the end of the injector. And guess what? Number four doesn't have a copper washer on. Number three doesn't have a copper washer on. Number four doesn't have a copper wash on. This one hasn't even got a jet in yet, uh, an injector in yet, sorry. So, number two jet, uh, injector, number three injector, and number four injector have got to come out. Because, like the fool I am, I forgot to put them in. All the learning curve, they say. Should have remembered, really, should have double checked. So, if you do this, don't be a fool like me. Put the copper washer on first before you put the injector back in. That's what it's supposed to look like. Copper washer on the end. Right, let's fetch these other two out and then we're going to uh, put the copper washers on up. Like they should have been in the first place. A bit damaged there. And, uh, well. So guys, the next thing we're going to do on the car is the mass airflow meter. We take that out, 
and give it a good spray, give it a good clean, see whether that will cure the problem. So after cleaning the mass airflow meter out, that still didn't cure the problem. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at this EGR valve. It has got a water cooling jacket, but we don't need to take all this off. We, we can just take this off. I don't know if you can see down the bottom there, these bolts here. A bit difficult to get to, but we're gonna try and fetch it off anyway. These two bolts here are a real pain to get off. Really difficult to get in with the Allen key. Uh, they are five mil Allen keys if you want to try this yourself. So with a little persuasion, we're going to take the EGR valve out. And it looks a bit knackered, doesn't it? Looks a bit cogged up, doesn't it? I'm going to give that a real good clean. Don't know whether you can see in there or not. Now we have the EGR valve off the car now. I'm going to give it a good scrubbing with a toothbrush and some carb cleaner. But this is the stuff we're going to use STP carb cleaner spray, professional series. And as you can see there, it's done quite a good job. I can't really see it in this light very well. Oh, it's a bit better. Yeah, as you can see, it's not done a bad job. Right, what have we got to do now? Fit it back on the car.